Good evening and welcome to Paul T's World on this marvellous summer's day. It's eight o'clock at night, it's nice and quiet, the sun's still up, and in this video we're going to have a look round a tour of my front garden, and in particular we'll have a look at what is flowering right now in mid-June. And what a start to start with Philadelphus, mock orange. It's scenting absolutely beautifully. I've got four mock oranges in the garden and they're so famous for their scent. And each side of the mock orange we've got the osteospermum. Now unfortunately they're actually closed in the evening. However, I did video them earlier today when all the flowers were open. I've done quite a lot with this border uh, this summer. Uh, this is some salvia that I've... And just behind we have the Antirhinum snapdragon. I love these snapdragon because they self-seed and flower all around the bed here. In fact, there are another couple of snapdragons there. Oh, can you hear that blackbird in the background? Oh, he's in my cherry tree. Now here is a poached eggplant. Oh, now look at this. Looks like it's going to start flowering. Now I bought this for one pound as a little seedling someone was selling. And I'm sure that it will grow and flower nicely this year. The perennials that I've put in here are designed for the bees. So when they're all in flower, we're going to have a lot of bees here. In fact, they've already been on this salvia. See what we've got in the side bed here. Here's the Cotinus that I bought and showed you in a plant hall last year. Had to buy it for the glorious leaves. Some Calendula that have self-seeded. They've closed up also for the evening. A Dahlia. And a lovely Flamingo Fuchsia. Hardy flute fuchsia. You can cut that back as much as you like actually in spring or autumn and it grows again beautifully. Now I've never had this before. I've never had this happen to me before. We've got an eryngium here. I really like the eryngium. I think it's sea holly isn't it? The bees love this. And what's really funny is I wanted to move it last year. So I dug it up and put it just over there and it died. And so this part of it here that I hadn't realized that I left has just grown. So this is from a very small part of it and I thought I'd lost it. And so I'm really pleased that it decided this is where it wanted to stay. And right next to it is the Erigeron. Such happy daisy-like flowers. Reminds me of the seaside. This clump here is the first to flower and then we have all this to come through and flower. It's growing along here. It makes its way along and it'll come along and fill this area here. In fact, here's a new plant. This is a cistus. So I bought this um, about a month ago, it flowers with white flowers. And what have we got here on the upper terrace? You've actually got some campanula flowering, all self-seeded. I love it when they just pop up where they like. The hydrangeas, we'll leave those for later. Oh, but let's just move across here. All the azaleas obviously have finished. Oh, here's a Brugmansia that I took as a cutting last winter. 
I just want to show you here one of the first hydrangeas that have come out and there it is. Hydrangea macrophylla, mophead, the big leaf hydrangea. And that hydrangea is the one that I dug up from what I call the road bed, the bed that runs along the road. And that's the one I split into five. And let's have a look at one of the other ones that had been split. And there are two doing beautifully. The Paul Scarlet Climbing Rose is fully out. Let's make our way now down to the middle part of the garden. See what's in flower down here. Oh, look at the lawn. Getting brown. We've not had that much rain, unfortunately. But round here, we have the penstemons. These penstemons have been here for 20 years. More probably. And these are the plug plants from last year. Doing well. I do have to water this quite well because there's a great big fir tree right here. And these penstemons are in the shadow of it, the rain shadow. So they rely on me to water this all the time. Now the next hydrangea that's in flower is the white one. Again, a mop head, white mop head. I have to watch this one for watering because it flops readily. We've got a few shrubs in flower down here. The first one is the potentilla. Nice little yellow flowers. The peonies. I'm really pleased with these peonies, these red ones. These came from a neighbour a few years ago and they're in the back garden and I moved them last year and I didn't know how they would do. I read at how deep you plant them, which is not very deep, and uh, they flowered straight away. In fact, they're just over. They flowered early. Oh, and there's some white ones as well. A little row of white ones. With the Kim Lilac behind and the Dutzia. Look at this. This Dutzia has never flowered this well before. I brought it over from the road bed. Oh, there's some bees on there, some bumblebees. There they are. It hadn't had any light or any water. And as soon as I brought it over here, gave it some food, gave it lots of water and gave it some room because of course I did cut back a Philadelphus here. A large Philadelphus and now look at it. Magnificent. Love that. The variegated maple, Drummondii. Looking gorgeous at this time of the year. It's actually put on some more height in this last year or two. It seemed to stop and now it's growing again. And it's backed by the other maple, the Crimson Queen. This is much bigger. Gorgeous tree this. It flowers beautifully in early spring. Contorted hazel, looking good. And next to it, the red robin. 
So I cut all the end twigs, all the end stems, oh, a few months ago, so that it would grow some new leaves. And when it grows new leaves, they're red. Lovely. Let's move round and see what we've got. Now in the back here, this is a wild area. We've got some Solomon seal there. The bluebells. Yeah, they'll be setting seed. They actually spread quite vigorously, the bluebells in this garden. Oh, and there's a nice view of the contorted hazel, the trunk and some of the branches. Now let's see what I've been doing along this border here. I call it the road bed because obviously the road runs along it as we can hear now as a car comes by. Which nicely, which nicely illustrates the point that I want a lot of deep vegetation here. It does suppress the noise a little bit, although vegetation doesn't actually do a great job with suppressing noise, but it does take, it does stop the pollution from cars and general traffic getting into the garden. So this is a rhododendron. And what I did, let's see if I can make my way through here, through into the jungle. Let's see what's happened here recently. Now, some rhododendrons can be cut back and some can't. And I couldn't tell you exactly which ones can and which ones can't. So you have to experiment. Now, I would say, looking at this, that this one can be cut back because I did do, I've cut quite a lot off this. And here you can see all the new growth coming. It had been neglected. I hadn't touched it at all. And so I have cut it back a little bit. Same with this Pyrrhus. So I've cut the Pyrrhus back a little bit. Oh, and here we've got a weed. <coughs> so I'll just pull that out. And look how it's regrowing here, this Pyrrhus. It's a variegated Pyrrhus, although some of the branches are reverting. Let's just come out and have a look at the reversion here. So here we are, we can see that down here it's losing its variegation. And up here it's still variegated. Now usually when a variegated plant has a vigorous part that's non-variegated, you cut it out and indeed you can do, and sometimes I do, but I quite like this uh, down here. So I'm leaving this part here that isn't variegated. Oh, look at the light on the contorted hazel. I love videoing at this time of the year, at this time of the day, because you get this gorgeous soft light. And then we arrive at the Rambling Rose. In fact, the Rambling Rose is about 20 feet to the right and it's gone all this way over here. Earlier this year, I gave the eucalyptus a little prune. Only a little prune, of course. It was about 35 feet high. So I decided what I wanted was a smaller tree and more bushy. And as you can see, it will be bushy. So let's just have a look at the hawthorn. It is actually an ornamental hawthorn, but at the moment it's got the rambling rose growing through it. And what's really nice is the rose goes all round the tree. Beautiful. Now, as soon as this rose is over, then I will actually cut it back and let it then grow again. You do have to be a bit careful with pruning rambling roses because you have to prune them directly after
they flowered because they need to grow new growth this year to flower next year. I hope you've enjoyed that little tour around my front garden in mid-June, and I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.